uh, Residente, thank you so much yeah. uh, for all of your work and uh, love to discuss the issue with you. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you questions in Spanish and English because I speak Spanish so, and also my followers and I want them to understand. So I hope it's okay. Yeah, ask whatever you want and, and we'll, I think we'll work this just fine. Okay. ¿Sientes que vives en un país libre con toda la vigilancia que hay, el NSA invadiendo el espacio privado de las personas, las noticias controlando y manipulando información, con comerciales de, para unirse al Army en, en, en los cines, este, etcétera, etcétera, etcétera? I think we live in a world where technology is radically changing, all right? So every, everybody has one of these things, right? Yeah. And what this thing does, it will tell somebody exactly where I am sitting. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right here, at this moment. And if I go across the street, they will follow me across the street. There is pretty good evidence that the NSA uh, records, not records is the wrong word, but uh, keeps track of the phone calls uh, that millions of Americans make, uh, that they get into your emails and into the websites that you choose to visit. Uh, that is a scary situation, yeah. all right? And that's what we call the big brother type society where government knows everything about you. But by the way, it's not only government, it's corporations. Yeah. You know, they know the products that you're buying, the books you're reading. So today, the government and private corporations have more knowledge about your life and my life than anyone would have ever dreamed of 20 or 30 years ago. We have got to change that. A free society means that you're free. You do what the hell you want. Live your life. Unless you are threatening people, you're into violence or terrorism, government has a right to stop that. But as a free individual, no, the government does, should not be knowing the phone calls you're making or the books you're reading. In other words, like you, like you feel free here? We have got to create policies which people, where people understand that they're living their lives. You know, you go to the doctor, that's your business, not somebody else to be checking into your medical records, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Or your banking, what, how much money you have in the bank. So yes, the government has got to protect us from terrorism. That's a serious issue. Yeah. But you know, 99.9% .9 of the people have nothing to do with terrorism, and they should not have government or corporations knowing everything about their lives. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same. That, you know, I think this happens in different countries also, in Latin America, also in Cuba, but in a different way. They put a guy. <laughs> Because they don't have uh, yes, Wi-Fi that's right. speed. Yes, that's right. They're doing it the old-fashioned way. Old school. Eh, en Estados Unidos eh, se habla mucho de libertad. Creo que es la palabra favorita de este país. ¿Por qué crees que luego de casi 120 años de Puerto Rico ser una colonia, Estados Unidos todavía no le no le da la independencia a Puerto Rico? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons for that, and that a lot of those reasons have to do with the fact that powerful special interests in this country uh, would like to maintain the status quo. Uh, but from my point of view, it's not my job to determine the political future status of Puerto Rico. That is the right of the Puerto Rican people. Yeah. And as you know, uh, the island is divided. There are some uh, like you who would like to see the island become independent in their own country. There are some who want statehood and there are some who want to maintain the status quo. So my view, and I think what is the fair thing to do, is to say as President of the United States, that decision should be made by the people of Puerto Rico through a referendum as soon as possible. Yeah, and, and do you think uh, education is has to do with it? Like, I think, because if the people is not well educated, they don't know what to choose. Uh, and that, that happened in Puerto Rico that we had, like, not so good, you know, not good education over there, and it's... Well, I think what a good campaign is about, and this should be worked out with the leadership uh, and the people of Puerto Rico, is giving the people enough time. I mean, it's not like saying we're going to do a referendum in two days. But pick a date in which people feel comfortable that the different sides can get their point of view out and make the case. Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, this is something that I think we should uh, work on so that people hear all points of view and can make what they believe is the best decision for the island. Puerto Rico es una colonia de Estados Unidos, sin embargo, no podemos votar por el presidente cuando nos afectan todas las decisiones que toman acá. Cuando seas presidente, ¿piensas darle el derecho al voto a los puertorriqueños? 
I very much, if the question is, do I, well, here's where it becomes complicated. If Puerto Rico becomes a, a state, it goes without saying that they will have the right to vote. And I believe that should be the case. Okay. And by the way, I believe Washington, D.C., uh, you know, which is probably has more people in it than my state of Vermont, also has the right for statehood. But to answer your question, it, by definition, if Puerto Rico becomes a state, of course they have the right to vote for president. And if we maintain a colony, we can't. Right. Okay. Current status, you do not have the right to vote. Okay. Sé que te expresaste en contra de la Junta de Control Fiscal en Puerto Rico. ¿Cómo crees que Puerto Rico podría mejorar su situación económica? ¿Qué tendrían que hacer? A couple, a couple of things. First of all, we have to understand the severity of the crisis. It is a real, real economic crisis. And thousands and thousands of Puerto Ricans are, are leaving the island to come to the United States because their education system is failing, there are no jobs, health care is inadequate. Uh, it is an economic disaster right now. That's number yeah. one. And number two, when you're in the midst of an economic disaster, if you're bleeding and you're hurting, I can't ask more from you. So I can't say, well, you have $73 billion dollars in debt and you've got to give Wall Street every single nickel despite the very high interest rates they are charging your country. So that debt has got to be renegotiated in a very significant way. Uh, by the way, this is not radically different than what happened in Greece, you may know. Yeah. Same thing. Big money owns the debt, and they're sucking the blood out of the island, in this case, forcing schools to be closed, health care to be closed. Uh, that's absolutely unfair. So what has to happen is Wall Street vultures, some of these vultures have got to sit down at the table with the representatives of Puerto Rico and work out a mutually beneficial agreement. They cannot, Wall Street cannot get every nickel that it wants when children's lives are at stake. I believe that very strongly. ¿Cómo ves la relación de Estados Unidos, Latinoamérica, más ahora que la juventud está muy consciente del papel que tuvo este país en la dictadura latinoamericana de los 60, 70, 80? You raise a very important point, uh, and it's one that we don't discuss very much. Uh, but as you know, under the Monroe Doctrine, uh, it, it, what that was about is simply saying the United States could do whatever it wanted in Latin America. They didn't like a government, they could overthrow it. And obviously that is completely absurd and unacceptable. Uh, the countries of Latin America deserve to be respected um, and treated as partners of the United States for economic and political reasons. Uh, I think, uh, as somebody uh, more than aware, I was in Chile uh, just last year, and uh, we went to the grave of Salvador Allende. It is no secret that Allende uh, was overthrown by the CIA and the United States government and uh, a uh, neo-fascist government was brought in, thousands of people were killed. Uh, that is unacceptable. And that the United States cannot continue to go into Latin America and overthrow or try to disrupt in economic reasons yeah. countries. Those decisions have got to be made. The future of each country has got to be made by the people themselves, not the United States. And furthermore, in recent years, for whatever reason, we have not been aggressive enough in working with the governments and establishing the kind of partnerships that we should. There's a lot of improvements that have to be made. And it's so great to hear it from you because I think you're the only candidate I am. talking about it. And I, I can't see, I can't understand how you being Latin or from Latin America, you can vote for other other candidates. Uh, also uh, uh, candidates that support uh, Kissinger, that he did so much harm to yes. Latin America. He did. And, and we passed through one of the worst uh, genocides in disappearing and killings in Argentina with Videla, in Chile with Pinochet, uh, with Rios Mont in Guatemala. Like, you're right. So you're absolutely. You. Look, the point you are making, and we have to be open about it, we can't go forward unless we're honest. Okay? And The history of the United States toward Latin America for a very, very long time has been the role of a powerful nation, the strongest military in the world, saying, we don't like that government, we're going to overthrow it. And chaos and, and mass murder often take place afterwards. Um, I visited Nicaragua, I was criticized for this, but I went to Nicaragua because I did not want, during the Sandinista regime there, because I did not want to see the United States and Reagan supporting the Contras to overthrow that government. 
So that's what I mean by developing a new relationship based on mutual respect. Yeah. between the Latin American countries and the United States. It's super important. It is very like important. You, like it's going to change the image of, of this country also from outside. Yes. Yeah, so it's great. And... Uh, eh, yo jugué béisbol eh, durante muchos años en mi vida hasta que empecé a estudiar arte. Eh, pero siempre he sido seguidor del deporte. Y para mí la figura de Roberto Clemente es muy importante. ¿Cuál deportista o pelotero marcó tu vida? Y también quería saber si había jugado béisbol. Yeah, I did. When I was a kid, I was yeah. a pretty good athlete. We played the baseball, basketball more. I was a track. I was a runner. Oh. Ran the mile in cross country. Wow. Uh, pretty good. Um, but I was growing up, I was obviously more than aware of Roberto Clemente and what a great ball player he was. Uh, but my favorite ball players were around the Brooklyn Dodgers because I grew up here in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Yeah. So people like uh, Jackie Robinson, yeah. uh, Pee Wee Reese. Uh, Roy Campanella, Duke yeah. Snyder. Those were people we <laughs> followed every single day. Yeah, wow. And do, do you collect baseball cards? I did. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't, you don't have it anymore? No, if I did, I'd be a very rich guy. If I had uh, those original... <laughs> do, you, do you have cards? Yeah, I still have. Uh, did you collect it as a kid? Yeah, and I still have them. Well, when I was a kid, I used to buy uh, and find cards and exchange. So I, I have Mickey Mantle, I have uh, Roger Maris, well, from the Yankees, uh, Willie Mays, Jack Williams, uh, old school. Robert you know what we used to do? I don't know if you used to do it. You know what we used to do? We used to flip them. Yeah. Did you ever do that? No, I, I no. You have a card and you flip it to the wall, okay? Yeah. And the card that gets closest to the wall wins the other guy's card. Oh, yeah. And then sometimes we used to flip them, heads or tails, And we would we would trade cards that way. Well, we used to put like two a bunch of cards, and you bet, and the higher number gets the gets cards. the card. Yeah. But then we always had like a card with a low number, and then based another card, and we 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 cheat. <laughs> yes. I, got, I have my cards. I'm sorry. No, no. This is something very nice. Obviously, in Cuba. Baseball is very, very important, and yeah. they have a lot of great ball players. I just learned last week that uh, kids from my city, of Burlington, Vermont, kids, are going to go to to uh, Cuba to play a baseball game with the uh, Cuban kids. Yeah. Well, and I think you're going to see a lot of changes in baseball now to make it easier for Cuban athletes to make it into the major leagues. You know, it's going to be fine. But we have the rookie of the year, that is Carlos Correa, and he's from Puerto Rico, and he's killing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. well, thank you. Okay, good. All right, thank you so much. Yeah.